If you're a Mac user, there's a couple things you really need to know when you're choosing what external SSD you should buy. So in this video, we're gonna talk through all the different details, all the features of external SSDs, and how to pick the right one for your use case. Today, there's three main speed classes of SSDs. You get USB, USB dual lane, and you also have Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4. The USB 3 drives are drives like the Crucial X9 Pro, the SanDisk Extreme Pro, or the Samsung T7. Really, any drive in that class that promises speeds up to around 950 or 1050 megabytes a second. In the real world, you're gonna see speeds on the read and write of between 700 all the way up to 950 megabytes a second. These work really well and come from sizes from 500, one terabyte, two terabyte, and all the way up to four terabytes. The main issue with these type of drives that use USB is they're gonna have issues with heat dissipation. And the longer you run files through them or the more files you're transferring at once, the more they're gonna bog down and slow down. So they're really not good if you're doing a ton of large file transfers and if you're planning on working off of the drives. The next class of drives is a drive like the Samsung T9, the Crucial X10 Pro, or there's also the Samsung Extreme Pro drive. These use USB 3.2 Gen 2 2x2, so they'll be designated as dual lane or 2x2 in the title of the item or under the specs. Typically, you'll see these promise speeds of around 2000 all the way to 2100 megabytes a second, but the issue with these on Mac is that Macs actually don't support the dual lane standard of USB. So they're gonna operate at the slower half speed of USB 3.2 Gen 2. So even with those drives that promise speeds all the way up to 2000 megabytes a second, you're only gonna be able to get around 900 to 950 megabytes a second tops on them. And a lot of these drives still aren't meant for pro use and they will have issues with heat if you're transferring over 100 gigabytes of files at a time. You're gonna see that your transfer speeds just start to slow down dramatically as you're in the middle of a large file transfer. So finally, my favorite class of drives is the Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 drives. Now, USB 4 is still pretty new and most Macs do come with USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 ports, but a lot of drives that are marked as Thunderbolt 3, those will work just the same. In the real world, you'll see that these drives are often marked as getting up to about 3000 megabytes on the read or write. I found with this SanDisk Professional Pro G40, I typically hit speeds of around 2500 megabytes a second on both the read and the write. But the nice thing about the Thunderbolt drives is they're typically actually designed for professionals who are using them on a daily basis and they're designed not to bog down when you're doing large file transfers. So when I say that, I mean, this is gonna get warm to the touch, but it's designed to handle that thermal load and keep going even when you're transferring 500 gigabytes of files all the way up to a terabyte of files or even more. These SanDisk drives come in configurations of one, two, and four terabytes. I personally have the four terabyte of the Pro G40 and I really enjoy using this drive and I edit off of this daily. So on the Mac, the Thunderbolt speeds are gonna be the way to get your fastest drives and typically the Thunderbolt drives are the ones that are actually designed for prosumers and professionals in the video world. The other drives just aren't designed to handle the thermal load that they can sometimes be put under. And they're really not designed to stand up to that day-to-day -day wear and tear use of transferring tons and tons of files. So my recommendation is spend a little bit of extra money and buy the Thunderbolt drive because that's gonna give you the fastest possible speeds on a Mac. If you're interested in buying any of my favorite drives, check the links in the description below. Now let's talk more about Mac for a second. A lot of people really rightfully hate on Apple because their SSD prices are so expensive. So the internal SSD prices on the Mac can add up really fast. And if you're using an older computer or you bought the computer thinking you were gonna do one type of work and then you're finding you're often filling it up, it is gonna be really hard to justify the price of selling that computer and spending so much more money to buy a new computer with a bigger drive. So if you're looking to go buy one of these SSDs, the first thing I'd ask you is if you're a consumer or if you're a prosumer or if you're a professional. If you're a consumer, then you can probably get away with one of the cheaper drives like the Crucial X9 Pro, or you can also buy the Samsung T7 Shield. I like both of those drives a lot. The Crucial is a little bit better in terms of size, the Samsung's a little bit better in terms of durability. But I would personally skip any of the drives that say they use USB 2x2 because your Mac is not going to be able to handle those speeds. Unfortunately, the way the Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 ports work on Mac, they just can't handle the dual lane standard. So they are gonna work still, but you're not gonna be able to take advantage of the speed. So if you wanna spend more money, I would just take the middleman out. Don't buy a dual lane drive. Either buy the USB 3.2 drives if you're on the cheaper end, and if you're a consumer, 
or if you're someone who's doing this every day and you need faster performance, go ahead and buy a Thunderbolt drive like the SanDisk Professional Pro G40. Now there are gonna be more USB 4 drives on the market soon. I would also really highly recommend those, but there's just not a ton of them out there yet. So the Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 drives by SanDisk are some of the best ones on the market. I'm also linking to some others in the description below. I've only used the SanDisk one, but they all perform about the same. Now, quick tangent, a lot of people comment on my videos and they like to say, well, why don't you just buy a enclosure and put an NVMe drive in it? Or why don't you buy a bigger enclosure and put multiple NVMe drives in it? And the thing I don't like about enclosures is when you choose to buy a random NVMe and put it in a random enclosure, there's no compatibility guarantees and there's no testing that's been done on it. So if Sabrent is selling an enclosure and you're buying a Samsung NVMe, there's no testing done to guarantee the speeds, the thermal performance, or anything like that. A lot of those NVMe drives are rated to be faster than the enclosure, but you're still just running the risk of a lack of compatibility or just not getting the best optimized performance. When a brand like SanDisk Professional puts an NVMe in this kind of enclosure, they're doing extensive tests and it's one specific drive with one specific controller that they've tested over and over and over to make sure it's gonna work really well in the real world. So that's why I personally just recommend buying the top of the line drives by SanDisk because they have tested everything extensively. One other thing to consider in the world of Mac SSDs, Apple definitely charges a premium for their SSDs, but they're able to hit faster speeds than any external enclosure is on Mac without using some sort of RAID combination and really expensive controllers. So when I say that, I mean the Apple SSDs hit anywhere from 3,000 all the way up to 7,000 megabytes a second on the read and the write side. And even the fastest external SSDs like the SanDisk Professional Pro G40 are limited to 2,500 megabytes a second in the real world, which is still quite a bit faster than buying the cheaper SSDs like the Crucial X9 Pro that clocks in at about 900 megabytes a second, but it's not going to be as fast as the max built-in SSDs. So I think that's part of why Apple does get away with charging so much more for those higher internal SSD upgrades. One more quick tangent. If you're often filling up your computer's drive and you're often filling up your main edit drive, I think you need to consider things a little bit differently than the average consumer or prosumer. You probably don't wanna just buy a bunch of these SanDisk Professional Pro G40s. You probably need a little bit more robust of a system. So if you're on a budget, I would recommend buying one Pro G40, using this as your fastest edit drive, the one that you're doing the most rapid read and write off of, and the one that you're transferring files off of and onto on a daily basis. And then I would recommend, if you're on the cheaper end, go ahead and buy some of these cheaper drives like the Crucials. Use these as your offload, your archive drives that you keep all your other footage on. Make sure you're using them responsibly. Have multiple drives, multiple copies of your files. Keep them in different locations, all the different things to be redundant. So that would be on the cheaper end. Or you could also go and spend more money. You could buy a RAID enclosure. You could buy a NAS. You could also buy the SanDisk Professional ProBlade system that's a little bit more modular. But look into buying a different system that's gonna give you more storage that's gonna be for more archival purposes. So keep using the one main drive for your editing, your day-to-day -day workflow. Then use your other drives like a NAS or a RAID drive. Use that as a way to offload your files to keep them for longer amounts of time. So to tie everything together, again, if you're on the consumer level and you're a Mac user, I would recommend just buy one of the USB 3.2 single lane drives. Those are gonna get you speeds of about 900 megabytes a second. It's still gonna be good for day-to-day -day storage of files, for gaming, for all your general purpose use. But if you're looking for something to transfer a ton of files every single day in your main edit drive to work off of because your computer drive is just too small, go ahead and spend more money, buy a Thunderbolt drive because that's gonna give you speeds that are closer to the Mac internal speeds. If you have any other questions about SSDs for Mac, leave a comment down below, I'll do my best to answer them. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the drives we talked about in this video, check the links in the description below.